Travel Squad podcast. We're four friends that grew up together in the same small town. We followed each other to San Diego, and now we adventure the world together. One passport stamp at a time. We're here to share our travel stories and inspire you to go on your own adventures. Even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. Kim. And I'm Dana. And And we're we're the the Travel Travel Squad Squad podcast. podcast. So grab your ticket, your passport, and don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Hello, fellow travelers. Hello. Hello. Welcome to episode 55 of the Travel Squad podcast, the top 21 gifts for travelers. So it's the end of October and the holidays are just around the corner. And this list of gifts that we created are gifts that travelers actually want and will use. I actually have a few of these items myself and I love them. So we wanted to share all of our items with you guys. Yes. And regardless of the time of year, it's always, always, always a good time to buy somebody a gift because everybody loves gifts. Generosity never goes out of style. Energy always returns to the main source. And what a beautiful thing for a traveler to take your spirit with them all around the world. Every year around this time, I start to get questions about what do you want for your birthday, which is November 16th, by the way, and (laughs) what would you like for Christmas? And usually I can't think of anything on the spot, although I know my Amazon cart is exploding with hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. But now, since we have this episode, I can just forward the link to this episode and say anything on this list will do because all of these are some amazing travel themed gifts that are guaranteed to make me or any traveler in your life happy. So let's get into it. What is our very first gift on the list? Our first gift on the list is a wall map with push pins. And it's super awesome. It's a framed world map. It comes with pins so you can put in destinations you've already traveled to. And you can actually even customize it to say the travels of Brittany and Jamal, for example, or whatever your guys' names are, or whoever you're buying it for. So it's more personalized. And Brittany gives that example because this is one of the products we have. And it is actually one of my favorite, if not my favorite travel product. So number one, right off the bat, it's such a beautiful map. You put the push pins in where you've been. And I know when Brittany and I come back from our vacations, that's the first thing we do even before we unpack. It's in our den downstairs. So when you walk right through our house, we always go put in that pin. And you could really think of this almost like the famous scratch off maps now we don't have a scratch off one we have the push pin one and my personal preference i do like these more because you could put the pin in specifically the scratch off ones you can go over a border scratch something incorrectly and so these ones i find to be a little bit more neat oh hating on the scratch off map (laughs) (laughs) i happen to have a scratch off map but you know what i have scratched off borders (laughs) you were like specifically trying to go to states that you accidentally scratched off accidentally scratched a little bit of montana thinking it was colorado and guess where we went this year montana Montana. (laughs) (laughs) well that's why i said it because i know that story number one but two why i like the push pin is ours has a key on it too so pins of this color is where we've been pins of this color is where we want to go pins of that color are some of our favorite places so you can really categorize it and this color pin is our next trip yeah and so it's on the wall everybody sees it and it's such a great conversation starter piece when everyone just sees all those pins pushed in there yeah Yeah. it's really cool but you know what i just want to give a shout out to kim for her love knowing no borders and going across all borders on that scratch (laughs) off according to my map I'm going to be visiting the Yukon pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fucked that up when you scratched off Alaska then, huh, Kim? Oops. <laughs> so the next item we're going to talk about is a travel planner. And it's a journal. And it can actually hold up to six trips. And it's really cool because it allows you to plan for the trip, budget your trip, research the places you want to go, even write down your packing list and things that you want to do while you're on your trip. So it's really a fun way to keep track and journal your travels in a way. 
I can totally see Zayna being into something like this. You love to journal. I do. I do. And some of my most treasured possessions are my journals from just one when I was in high school and two when I was in my early 20s and I was traveling all over the world. And so I have train tickets. I have the Euro rail maps. So if you want it from 2007, if you want it from 2008, I got it all. And you can almost turn this journal into a scrapbook in a way. You know, you make an itinerary out of this. You talk about your trip. And I remember, Zaina, as we were kids, too, do you remember how mom, when we went to Lebanon all those times, would make us keep a journal? And this is in such a nice, beautiful bound journal versus an old, like, Spiral notebook. Spiral notebook. Yeah, that's exactly what we had to write them in. So these are more personable and really, really nice and great way to catalog your trips. And like I said, make a scrapbook. And like I said, it holds up to six trips. And for each trip, it gives you five pages to use like as you want. So you can attach pictures or postcards, write down fun facts, or just generally describe your experience. And I think that's super awesome way to like document your trip as you go as well. And I just want to throw out there that there are things that you think you're going to remember and for the most part, you are going to remember the big things, but it's so interesting and it's so fun for me to go back to my journals and just see something that I wrote that I have not thought about in years and just seeing like two sentences, it takes me back and I'm just like, oh my gosh, if I didn't have this written down, this memory would be lost forever. And even if it's not in my journal, just hearing one of the squad members say something that I forgot about that took place years ago, it just takes me right back and it makes me laugh. So there's nothing quite like a journal. Couldn't agree more. That's also how I feel about pictures. So number three on our list is a traveler's charm bracelet. Now, I, as a male, wouldn't be wearing one of these. It wouldn't be my personal style. But are you sure about that? I'm sure about it. I'm sure about (laughs) it. As cool as they are, it's not my personal style, not judging anybody who does. But if you're a male, you can wear it anyway. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. But these are more suited to you ladies here. And why don't you tell us a little bit more about them? I mean, they are really, really cool, and I like them a lot. (laughs) Yeah, so there's little charm pendants. There's an airplane. There's a globe. There's a compass and it has a little quote that says life is short. The world is wide. And especially now during COVID, when you can't necessarily go to all the places you wish you could, this is just a nice reminder on your wrist that like you still love travel. Travel still a part of your life. You're wearing it on your wrist, literally. Showing it off to the whole world. Yeah. Every time you see a compass, every time you see a globe, every time you see an airplane, you put that visualization in your head and you become that much closer to taking your next trip because your mind is going to seek ways to figure out how to make that visualization come to life. That resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very deep charm bracelet. <laughs> Okay, number four on our list. I'm really excited about this one. This is a hanging travel toiletry bag, which doesn't sound very exciting, but for someone that likes to be organized and have all their shit on a trip with them, I love it. I actually got one of these as a gift from a friend for my birthday last year. The one I got was pink with flamingos on it because I love flamingos. But the one we have listed in the show notes and linked out is just a plain black one. But this is awesome because it folds up really small, but you can put everything in it from makeup to shower stuff to medicines to hair stuff to like literally everything you need all in one spot. I love it. And there's a lots of different compartments so you can organize it the way that you need, which makes it super usable and you can hang it. So when there's lack of counter space at some of the hotels, you can just hang it up on the towel rack and get into it that way. I mean, we're three girls and one guy. We never have a lack of counter space. (laughs) So, but anyways, I just bought this myself, guys, because we came back from Washington. And I remember telling Jamal that, oh my gosh, because he needed something that I had in my toiletry bag. But I have several because I don't have one big enough to fit everything in there. So when Jamal asked me for it, I was like, yeah, I have it, but I have no idea where it is. And so then Kim was like, girl, you got to get your shit together. And so I (laughs) I came home and I bought this. Get your shit together. I know, I know. It's razors in there too, because you never know when you're going to need to shave. Absolutely. Oh, I could tell you stories about Zena, but I will save you. (laughs) (laughs) I will save you all. (laughs) So the next item on our list is a digital luggage scale. And how many times do you pack a bag before the trip and you're like, shit, does this weigh too much? How much does this weigh? Are they going to overcharge me? So if you have this digital scale, you can pre-weigh your bag at home and not have to dig everything out of your bag at the 
airport and shove it in your carry-on so you don't have to pay Which that has access. happened to us several times. Well, this scale would have been real useful when we were in Machu Picchu because <laughs> when we uh-huh. were in Cusco about to go on the Inca Trail as our very, very first squad trip. Do you remember, ladies, they gave us that scale to weigh our bags because we were only allowed mm-hmm. to take a certain amount of weight for our porters to carry. But I they, don't remember. You don't remember because you, you had a freak out, Zaina, on that one. <laughs> when we snacks take it out because we couldn't get underweight on the scale. <laughs> well, those snacks came in clutch. I just want to remind you. So always leave the snacks in number one. But they gave us one <laughs> that was like a scale that hangs in the grocery store when I'm weighing my produce, right? It had the needle and everything. This one's a nice, beautiful digital one. So you can have this one at home or even take it with you when you go on your trip because if you're buying souvenirs or anything that you want to bring home, you have this and you'll definitely know, do I need to disperse some of the weight and not have to pay that extra check luggage fee for being overweight. Yeah, boo checked luggage fees for being overweight. Yeah. Seriously. Also, boo to embarrassingly pulling crap out of your suitcase and stuffing it in your backpack at the check-in counter. Yeah, or... <laughs> not, not that I've ever done that. <laughs> right. Or someone else gets underweight and then you tell them, wait, hold on to that because we need to weigh this. And then they weigh the other one only to find it's heavier. So then you have to take stuff out to put it in someone else's. Sounds like a clusterfuck. <laughs> Doesn't happen to us. You know why? We have this scale. Number six on our list is another one that I threw on here because I like organization and I like looking cute. And this one solves both of those problems. It is a tiny travel jewelry box and it organizes your rings, your earrings, your necklaces. I cannot tell you the number of times I've thrown everything into a little makeup bag and it gets all just that is a cluster. If you want to see a cluster, I've had so many necklaces that I've just thrown away because they've gotten knotted into not that I can't even spend the time and the patience undoing. You know, what's really funny about you say the knots of the necklace though, Kim, and definitely do get this because I have a story just as well as how this actually comes in handy so you don't lose stuff. But if you don't buy this one, I've seen a travel hack. So squad tip to you guys, at least if we're just talking necklaces, put it through a straw, like a plastic, your necklace through a plastic straw Ah. and then tie it. That way it sits in there. I'm not in the business of killing turtles. Yeah, I know you're not. I'm talking (laughs) a paper straw, Kim. I don't know why you wouldn't (laughs) think I was thinking a paper straw, but no, I really do like this product too, because do you guys remember when we were in China and I bought Brittany those pearl earrings? Mm -hmm. The first time she wore them on a vacation after we got home from China and took them, It was placed in like one of her little vanity bags just as well, like you used to have the problem with. And one earring was in there when we came back and one was gone. And I guarantee you, Mm -hmm. if we had this at the time of that, we wouldn't have lost it. So they definitely do come in handy. You will lose things when you travel and having to dig through it is I also lost just one of my pearl earrings from China. We can put it together (laughs) and we can just share and rotate who has it now, I guess. We can definitely do that. I also have a personal story about that. Um, When we went to Mexico City for my girlfriend, Nicole, for her wedding with Roberto, the very first night, as soon as we got there, I went to the bathroom. I took my Tanzanite earrings out of my ears that I got from South Africa. And because I didn't have this and because I didn't have anywhere to put my earrings I put it right there next to the sink and next thing you know one of my earrings falls down and someone from downstairs in a suit came they undid the pipe because it went so far down and they still couldn't get it so they called someone up with hangers and then they put a shitload of tape at the end of the hanger and then they stuck it down the pipe so they can fish for my earring Long story short, they ended up getting my earring in the end and they didn't even take a tip, even though I tried to give them a tip. No propina? No propina for him, but he really deserved it. I wanted to give it to him. And all I can think now is, my goodness, if I had this, we would have never gone through that catastrophe. Well... He would have never gone through. <laughs> and most people wouldn't have gotten so lucky to recover it. And that's another thing. A lot of these things are on here because we have personal experience where we learned better and then we picked up these products along the way so that we don't have these mishaps. And any traveler in your life, whether that's you, a really close friend, sibling, they are going to love these. And rest assured, these come with user reviews such as us. And we can tell <laughs> you that they are for sure needed. And this one in particular that we've linked in the show notes, they come in a few different colors 
dollars fairly small it's fairly cheap around ten dollars and it will save you hassle it will save you from losing or having to throw away jewelry so it's a very smart investment for any traveler number seven on our list is another one for jewelry and travel lovers this one is a sterling silver necklace that has two pieces on it one of them is a nice pendant that says enjoy the journey Zena likes that and the other piece is a nice compass that goes along with it it's perfect for ladies in your life that love jewelry or heck even men jamal yeah well you know just like the bracelet it is almost a statement piece to the world really that you are a avid traveler and that you love to travel. so whether that avid traveler is you a friend a sibling this is the perfect gift for them to make that statement to the world like yes i love to travel and it's one of those things when you see it it's just like yes this is a conversation piece i love it because truly 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 you never know where the journey is going to take you because even though you have a destination even though you know what you're going to do you never know what's really going to happen and how the journey is going to end up and so for me this is is the biggest reminder of how spontaneous travel truly is because you never know what's going to happen. Well said, Zena. Very well said. So number eight on our list is going to be a diversion water bottle that you can actually use to stash your valuables, whether it be keys, money, jewelry, etc. So why don't you ladies tell us a little bit about this? It's not just that you can use it for it. It's intended to be used for that. It's one part water. And on the bottom, you put your money, you can put lots of other things in there. And so two people who may be looking to pickpocket you while you're traveling, this is the perfect because they would never want to steal your water bottle. But <laughs> wait, you guys, in my very infomercial voice, there's more. It also, but wait, there's more. It also comes with a smell-proof bag. Whoa, <laughs> smell-proof bag. Smell oh. Just in case. <laughs> but no, th I really like this one because it is the perfect decoy when you travel, let alone the fact like if you're a beach person like yourself, Kim, like realistically, that's one of the biggest places that people will get stuff stolen. They look into beach bags that you take, mm -hmm. hiding under the towel, but someone sees a water bottle. It's just inconspicuous, right? I really like this too because as you're talking about you know, hey, people get stuff stolen at the beach. This is really nice because you don't even have to take it to the sand. You can leave it in your car because it's going to be so inconspicuous just sitting there in your car. People might look in your car and then see a water tumbler and they're going to be like, uh, nothing's in here. So you don't even have to take it to the beach. Very true. So number nine has your name all over it, Jamal. It is a whiskey decanter in the Ooh. shape of a globe. I love it already. It sounds so elegant. It comes with two whiskey glasses with basically like etchings of the world on it. I want this for my bar. It looks so cool. I and mean, Jamal's super into whiskey. Well, I love whiskey, number one. Two, I'm a sucker for a map. I love maps. Ever since I was a kid, even before I was an avid traveler, I've always loved maps. So this is right up my alley right here. And for anyone who is a traveler and does like to have the occasional cocktail or elegant drink, whether it be whiskey, bourbon, scotch, brandy, whatever you want to put in here, really, really cool travel decanter and travel theme. The decanter even has what seems to be a pirate ship in there with flags and sails. It's amazing as if it's sailing all across the world on its journey. You took the words out of my mouth because what I wanted to do was what Kim just said, but wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, I sold it on that one. I'm telling you that little glass ship inside the decanter itself, really, really cool, special touch. I love the way that you look at it because you see it as a ship traveling around the world. I see it as a sunken ship within the water. I was going to say shipwreck too. It looks expensive. And this is the kind of thing that when people come into your home, it, it's something they're going to ask about. They're going to say they like it. And it not only comes with the glasses, but it has the stones that you can freeze and put in your whiskey so it doesn't water it down when you're drinking it. Love it even Bam. more. Bam. It is Bam. a statement piece through and through. Yeah, it's made of very rich mahogany. Ooh, and... <laughs> Sound like Ron Burgundy I over there. Know. I just want to stroke the wood. Oh, my house. <laughs> the girth of the wood. My house smells of mahogany. Oh, and a bonus. Why don't you pick up some whiskey on your travels to put in it? Oh. Ooh. Well, that's Kim. right up your alley, Kim. You always love to bring booze from where we go. Oh, yeah. That's your signature move. And I don't know if you guys mentioned this, but not only does it have the world on the decanter, but the cups, because like Jamal said, it comes with the two cups. They have the world on it as well. Yeah. Beautiful etchings. Mm-hmm. 
Number 10 on our list is not alcohol, but it is also a statement piece for your home. This one is a National Geographic coffee table book called The Destinations of a Lifetime that if someone comes to your home, they're guaranteed to pick it up and flip through it. Not even just a few destinations, but 225 of the world's most amazing places. You will probably even grow your bucket list by owning this book. I love books like this because they truly show you things that are on the offbeaten path, if you will. Yes, there's probably going to be some of the more cliche travel destinations and things to do. But these books, especially when they have a list as comprehensive of 225 or even some that go up to a thousand, they really show you things that like, huh, I've never actually heard of this. And then you see it and then you get inspired and then you're intrigued by the story of like, how is this place so cool and I never heard of it? And now it's on your travel must do destinations. So I really, really love these books. And everyone always picks something up off the coffee table. I can't tell you how many different coffee table books Brittany and I have that are conversations conversation starters just as well. And it's not just pictures and a list of places to go. It includes where to go, where to eat, where to stay, and what to do to ensure the most enriching and authentic experience. Number 11 on our list is one that we cannot shut the fuck up about. It is an anchor portable charger for your cell phone. I can't say enough about this. I mean, I talk about it pretty much in every single podcast. I use it to charge my phone in the car, on trails. It's good to take to the beach with you because if you're out all day and you're running through your phone and your battery runs down, this is a great backup battery. And I've even used it to charge my phone, Kim's phone, and Charlotte's phone (laughs) when we were in Santa Barbara and all of our batteries were charged up again. Three full charges on one battery backup. Brittany had it and I ended up picking up one for myself. I really can't go anywhere without it. Again, and you just never know when you're really going to be on your phone a lot while you're traveling using it for maps. So always having that backup power and charger is essential. My favorite usage of it. I love Southwest, but one thing Southwest does not have is mobile chargers. Yeah, what's up with that? I was going to say something about that. And so I do love how they actually give you free television and movies, but you have to use your phone for that. So that can definitely drain battery real fast when you use their Wi-Fi. So I always use this specifically when I'm line to charge my phone to use the entertainment that the airlines do have if they aren't the screens on the back of the seat. Okay, so someone actually called Southwest out about that. One, there's a million reasons why we love Southwest. But they're super funny with their customer service because someone called them out being like, yo, Southwest, we're in like 2019. What's up with you not having the charger on the seats? And they responded back being like, yo, bro, it's 2019. What's up with you not having a portable charger? Good news. With all the money that you're saving on your Southwest flight, you can now afford it. And see, yeah, I know I, I saw that one. That was a good comeback one on social media. But I see, I don't hate them for that because I love my cheap fares, right? I mean, just imagine taking their whole fleet and now putting them all chargers in the seats, right? So the fact that they give me entertainment, I love, but you definitely do need this charger and any traveler is going to love it. So number 12 on our list is a life straw. And any traveler is going to love this, but more specifically, I feel geared towards those wilderness explorer travelers. And this life straw is great. You can put it in any body of water and it is its own natural filter. So if you run out of water, need to take a sip, you can put this in a creek, you can put it in a stream, you can put it in a lake and sip out of it. And this is a filter straw and it makes everything that you drink safe to consume out of it up to a thousand gallons, believe it or not, before the filter dies. So really, really useful. And you can take it hiking, backpacking, camping, or just even traveling because you never know where you're going to end up. And it just might be a good emergency preparedness piece. There are so many destinations in the world that we've even been to where they don't recommend drinking the water. Mexico, China, Thailand, many, many others. So this could work from the tap water in your hotel too. Like in a pinch, yeah, absolutely. If you can't make it to the convenience store, get bottled water, do anything like that. But yeah, absolutely. This is a real clutch travel product for sure, the Life Straw. Hey travelers, we wanna stop for a quick minute to tell you about a really exciting product we put together just for you. As you all know, we love getting you excited to visit places for yourself by sharing what we did and making it easier by giving you squad tips that we learned along the way. The Travel Squad has created something to provide even more value for you in addition to our episodes by detailing trip itineraries and comprehensive multi-page guides with everything you need to know to do the trip right. 
These itineraries include information on what to see and do in the area, where to stay, directions for the best routes, and even where to eat along the way. And we put them into these beautiful PDF guides just for you. We created itineraries for a week in Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, Big Island, Hawaii, and an itinerary for an American Southwest road trip. Woo! And so many more itineraries to come. We are so excited to announce that they are now available to purchase on our website. So go over to travelsquadpodcast.com to get yours today. Next up, lucky number 13 on our list. It is a waterproof travel organizer. This is super important because it organizes all of your electronic cords in an organizer. So for me, I do have an iPhone, but you know, the newer iPhones don't have the regular jacks to plug into your phone. And I like to use my earphones on the airplane. And so I have like another adapter so it can plug in, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then I also have different plugs for different places that we go to. So there's that. And so it's just nice to have everything in one spot instead of throwing it in my backpack and then having to fish for it later on and being like, oh, where is it? Or did I forget this? Or did I forget that? Like your iPhone cord charger too. Totally. And it's not just cords. We can put your GoPro in here, your digital camera and the memory dish that go inside of it, your portable charger, all those electronic things that you want to keep in one place and you don't want to get wet in case something spills on your bag or the liquor that you brought home busts in your suitcase. You sound like you've had that liquor busting <laughs> problem before. Actually, Kevin. I have not because I'm a pro packer. Yes. But yeah, I really like it too. Most importantly, sometimes when I travel, I just jam my headphones into wherever because it's the smallest thing. But this keeps everything electronic all together that you need easily accessible. It's definitely a must have. So number 14 on our list is going to be going back to another coffee table themed book. And I'm sure we've all heard of this one before, but it is still such a classic and such a great book. It is 1000 places to see before you die. So we're stepping up from 225 and we're moving it straight to 1000 <laughs> right here. So if you thought 225 was a lot, we're going to 1000. So we're also going a little more morbid with before you die that's very very true <laughs> <laughs> you know this really resonates with me as a hospice nurse i'm like yes i do need to see all of these places before i die but i, I mean you had a patient who wanted to go see someplace before he died and you said hey i've been there exactly and he made it and he fulfilled his wish before he died but i want to go back to what i was saying too about this really being you know a conversational piece or a coffee table piece that someone will always grab because i can't tell you how many times i've actually seen this book on somebody's coffee table like in their home. As a matter of fact, Brittany, your dad has this book. And I swear on my life, every time I'm over there and I'm just kind of around the coffee table, I'll always pick this up and I'll find someplace new because I've really never read this from one to a thousand. <laughs> I just kind of like skim, but I always find something new in this book and it's very exciting to Squad see. Squad tip, put it in your bathroom. I was going to say that too, that you know what, not only do books have purposes on a coffee table, but you know, sometimes there's some good bathroom books because you never know what gold you're going to hit when you're in the bathroom. You get, <laughs> that sounds like you get most of your inspiration <laughs> in the bathroom, Zana. I really don't, but you know. It's a but, dying trend, uh, reading on the toilet. Everyone's on their phone these days with it. So this, I guess that's a good one for the bathroom, Kim, you're right. But Bring for it back. each place, it tells you why it's essential to visit. It even includes hotels to stay at, restaurants to go eat at, and even festivals to check out while you're in the area. And it has a whole bunch of information. So it's definitely a book worth looking into. Very cool. Number 15 on our list is another very cool item. We all talk about a travel fund and saving for travel. And this product takes it to the next level. It's a travel piggy bank, but it's shaped as an old school suitcase. And it's really cute. It's a suitcase with leather buckles on it. It has a map on it. it says adventure fun. Like you get excited to put your money in this thing and save for travel. This is so cute. I haven't seen this before. I'm just looking at it right now. And I'm just like, wow, I need one of these because you know what? This is another statement piece. It is. And especially for that young wonderluster in your life, whether it be your child, whether it be a nephew or anyone who has a sense for adventure, this is an awesome, just regular savings piggy bank. But the inspiration that you get with the suitcase, the adventure fund, the map, 
it's definitely really, really awesome to give to that traveler. It's so versatile because you can give it to someone really young and encourage them to just let them know that they can see the world, that they can travel, put their inspiration to save for something, right? Give them that hope, give them that courage. And it's still just as cute for an adult because who doesn't want to just put little loose coins and change in there? Yeah, I was just going to say that it doesn't look childlike. You can actually put this on a bookshelf in your house as a decorative piece too. Yeah, I was thinking it might look good in our den even because our den is travel theme. I also thought if we don't use it for the den, if Jamal and I ever have children, their room's definitely going to be travel themed. So why wouldn't I put this in there? (laughs) We're always looking for ideas of what to put on our shelves, Brittany. And I think we have just found one even for ourselves. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Next up on the list, number 16, and it is a 16th century. Ooh, I like that. Number 16 is a 16th century (laughs) Italian replica old world globe bar. Now we have to describe this to you because the title, you may not be able to envision what it is, but it's fucking gorgeous. So it's kind of the size of a bar cart, if you would imagine that. But it is this beautiful, like cherry glossy wood. It has the globe on the top of it. The globe opens and then within it is where you put the glasses and the bottles. Super classy, very unique. Not only that, but when you open up the globe, it has land pictures inside of it too. I mean, the attention to detail that they put on this is immaculate. I really, really like this piece. If we were talking and hyping up that decanter earlier, this is going to take it to the next level right here. I mean, this is your own mini bar within a globe itself. And I know Kim was saying it's kind of difficult to describe, but to any of our movie buff fans out there, if any of you have seen Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, there's a scene with Mike Myers in there where he actually opens up a globe like this and pours himself a drink. So if anyone's seen that movie and has that frame of reference in mind, this is exactly what that is. It's a very amazing classic globe piece that opens up to be your own little personal wet bar. Now, what Jamal just said, though, this is taking that decanter to the next level. I still think that you compare both of these very beautifully together. They would sit beautifully right next to each other. Absolutely. I love it because they're both the same colors and it just goes in the one, just the same color theme and then the two, the same travel theme. Are you going to get this for me for Christmas, Anna? I already have it for oh, you. Okay, I'm ready for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just waiting for, to, to give it to you for Christmas. But if you want it earlier, let me know. No, I'll save the anticipation of Christmas. I'm excited. Sounds good. Sounds good. So the decanter is a good starter piece if you're looking at price and then you can move up to this or just go balls to the walls and start with this one instead. But definitely both of them together is a must for your collection. Number 17 on our list takes a turn to a little more practical. This one, Brittany, is all about. Oh my God, how did you know? So on our last <laughs> trip, well, what? so what it is, is it is a first aid kit and there's 299 pieces. Not 300. <laughs> Why are they skimping out on me? <laughs> Give me that one extra piece. Everyone knows odd numbers sell. Yes. <laughs> It has band-aids, it has gauze, it has antibacterial ointment, it has everything that you need. And when we were on our last trip in Washington, Kim wore these boots that started to give her a blister. And Kim, did you have a first aid kit? I did not, but I was with someone that did. And that was me. <laughs> Kim was getting nasty blisters and corns all over her feet. It was really gross to watch corns? her maintain it. Yeah. What the fuck is a corn? Those were corns on your feet, Kim. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't get corns on my feet. <laughs> you guys, I'm just like reading the description of everything that's in there. I mean, this is so crazy. There is a tongue depressor. What is that? You don't know what a Scrapes tongue depressor is? the bacteria off your tongue, right? No, it's where you... <laughs> <laughs> it's where you check to see if you have strep throat, Kim. You put it on you your put, tongue put and it then on your tongue and hold it, it down. down. Oh, okay. Oh, Oh, you know what? When we were in Lebanon, Brittany just did that test by having me go, ah, and I was positive. But I had Cipro with me, so yay. So if you do have Cipro, put it in with what else is in here? With the ibuprofen. And an ice pack, tons of Band-Aids, a cute little carrying kit that packs all of that stuff in a really small kit, actually. Disposable gloves, iPads. And when I say iPads, I'm talking about your OHO, your E-Y-E, iPads. Eye patches? It says pad on here, but yeah, essentially, I guess it's just a... Um, just in uh, case you get poked in the eye. <laughs> you never know when that's going to happen to you. You know what? If you get a little something-something in your eye, this is good to have. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my gosh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing that I'm seeing on this list is an aluminized rescue blanket. That Ooh. is phenomenal. 52 by 84. That's actually, I would get this just for that. Like that's fucking phenomenal. Does it have a carbon monoxide detector in it, Zena? So they don't, but that is definitely something that we would need. No, seriously. Oh, that do you should guys be know, on our list. Do you guys know what alumina, uh, the aluminized rescue blankets are? Why don't you tell us about it? You're so passionate. <laughs> it's crazy. Like when you get rescued and like you're freezing, it is the thinnest, thinnest, mm, thinnest, yes, tiny yes. little blanket. But because of the material, it's like wearing. Oh, one they of give that to blankets. astronauts. That's astronaut yes. blankets. And they give it to runners after marathons. And, and yeah, when people are rescued from burning houses or, mm -hmm. or hypothermia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To get one of those in this for this cost. You guys, this. Oh, my gosh. Who this would is like so to give practical. this to Zena? She would love one. <laughs> <laughs> Someone can help Zana get prepared finally for a vacation. <laughs> Just saying, this is uh, something that you shouldn't skimp out on. Nice travel insurance policy. Number 18, we go back to the jewelry buffs over here. We have another necklace, this one. It's more simple. This one's just a compass necklace. This is more my style, that minimalist kind of a jewelry pendant. Sterling silver. The description calls it a little romantic, if you will. I think any piece of jewelry that has some memorabilia associated to travel is going to be great for a traveler. And these are just a few of the ones that we picked out that we liked ourselves. <laughs> or you know what? Like for someone out there, you can always buy it. That way, if you meet someone on the road you can just kind of like have a little gift in your pocket to give to a, a girl. memento to remember me by absolutely that would be serendipitous wouldn't it exactly can you imagine if marco had something like this <laughs> for you, what I'm saying, dude like boom coming out of your pocket just to give someone that you met on the road how sweet so number 19 on our list is a TSA luggage lock and it's a two pack and it's a combination lock. So it's really good for your suitcase or baggage. It comes in a few different colors and it's always a good idea to lock up your luggage, especially if you're staying in a place like a hostel because you never know who's going to be inside your room with you. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Locks, luggage locks sounds like the most boringest gift. Maybe, but to a traveler, these are like socks when you're adults. Yeah, it's so practical. You took the words right out of my mouth, Xander, because as you were framing this, I was thinking to myself, man, it's like, you know, when you got socks as a kid in your stocking for Christmas, you're like, what the hell is this? And now you're an adult and you're like, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> this is what these locks are for travelers. That is for sure. Brittany and I for sure have travel locks like this, the code ones. But these are so great in terms of just making sure that nobody's going to be rummaging through your suitcase. Like it was said, if you're in a hostel, staying with people, or even, you know, I hate to say this, the reality is, you know, even at airports, you just never know what's going on when they're checking your luggage. So these are really clutch to have for your own personal safety and protection. Or even if, you know, your luggage is safe in your hotel, what I really like about this is that you can use it for your backpack too, because, you know, sometimes Sometimes you are in places where you're on the subway and you have your backpack on your back and instead of having to turn it around and wear it on your stomach, you can safely wear it on your back and have this to close your backpack. I actually used to own this, but squad tip for you, because it is a combination lock, you're going to want to save the combo somewhere you can find it again for your next trip. <laughs> Otherwise, so, you may... like you're... so was the four digits too much? Would you have needed a three, Kim? It's, it's not about the number of digits. <laughs> it's about recording it somewhere where you can find it months later for your next trip. But luckily, the one we've linked in the show notes comes with two, just in case. There you go. <laughs> and I always used to lose my locks. Like I would go home from a trip and not know where I put my locks, but I've actually just decided to leave them on my luggage at all times. So there's constantly a lock on there. So I never have to look for it. It seems so simple, but yet we really just discovered that as of late. You know, what I really <laughs> like about this is because I do have TSA um, pre-approved locks, but it's with a key, whereas this is a padlock. And the biggest stressor that I have when I travel is whether or not I'm going to lose my tiny little keys because I can't imagine getting someplace and not being able to open my luggage. Yeah, that would really suck. Mm -hmm. So number 20 on our list is actually one of my personal favorite travel items. I tell everybody about this. I have it. I love it. It's like my travel map where I come home from a vacation and it's one of my favorite things to do. Although this is more catered specifically to national parks and it is our travel stamp book. And Brittany, you found these originally. So why don't you tell our listeners all about this one? I actually found it in a national park visitor center. And what it is, 
is it's a little booklet and the booklet breaks down all of the national parks by region and the area that they're in. It lists them in the order that they became national parks and it gives a description of the national parks and what the highlights are to do in that park. And you can purchase a stamp for each individual park that you go to and then label the date that you went on it. So it's a really good keepsake. And I love it because when I go home from vacation, I pre-order them. And so when I get home, I get to just slide the stamp in and put the date in and you love sliding that stamp in don't I you? do and not only do they have them for national parks but they have them for all of the 50 states and U.S. territories they also have blank ones so that you can put in other just travel destinations like Antelope Canyon or mm. monuments or big famous cities that you might go to instead so it isn't just specifically for national parks or U.S. states they have several different options I also saw on their Instagram that they're constantly adding new stamps. Yes, and if you have a stamp suggestion, you can DM them and give them the suggestion on which stamp to make next. That's yeah, because cool. originally they started out with the book for the national parks, and then they added the states onto it. And then from there it was, oh, highlights within the states. Like they even have like Lake Tahoe. They have like Beale Street down in. Different monuments yeah. or attractions. And yeah. so that's the things that they're always really adding as, you know, highlights within the states. But every time we come back from a trip, whether it be a new state that we've gone to or one of the new national parks, this is always a highlight to put in for us. And it's a little keepsake that Brittany and I have. And when we fill up all our national parks, I'm going to be so stoked about it. So you can find these booklets and all of the stamps on travelstamps.com. Be sure to check them out and see all of the amazing places and stamps that they have in stock. And I just want to say too, I know Brittany said this a little bit earlier, you can find the stamps in visitor centers if you are lucky at the national parks. But again, not all the visitor centers do carry them. So you can always get them online. And I do recommend purchasing it direct through them. It is a small company, but even though they are small, they offer such a great product. So get it directly through them versus the visitor centers. I highly recommend it that way. And here we are at number 21. This is last, but certainly not least, my favorite product on the list, the Travel Squad Itineraries. These are travel itineraries that we've been talking a lot about lately. We've been working on them. We have a couple out right now. We have a lot more coming at you. A couple that we have right now are a week in Yellowstone and Grand Tetons or the American Southwest Road Trip where we give details on literally everything. The route to take, how long it takes to get there, where to eat, where to stay, what to see, what to do even what hikes to do and how long the hikes are. Literally every single detail that we've researched so you don't have to. Or even if it's something that we did, but we wish we did it this way instead, just so you have all the details and you can make the decision based on yourself, like specifically for the Yellowstone Grand Tetons trip. What I really like about that is we state where we picked up the bear spray and where we dropped off the bear spray. But in hindsight, once we were there and we learned that we could drop off the bear spray at a different place, we wished that we held onto that bear spray and dropped it off at that place instead. So it's all those kind of details. And when it comes to hotels, we're going to give you options that we considered, but then this is what we ended up doing. So it's the true 411. So super, super comprehensive, great gift for any traveler out there who loves to take trips and do the minimal planning. We've done it for you. Put it into an amazing itinerary piece as Kim and Zaina have just described. So definitely do check it out and get it for the traveler in your life. The only thing to say about this is keep in mind we don't necessarily do easy or short hikes. (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. We do take hikes that are one to two miles that are two beautiful viewpoints that aren't necessarily difficult. That is true. That is true. Part of me is teasing because there are little, you know, hikes that we do have in there or flats and whatnot. But on big days, you are going to see big hikes. And if you're listening to us, it's because you do those big hikes anyways. So uh, you're going to love it. And you're going to love all the variety that we're bringing to you. So it's our favorite time of the episode. Questions of the week. Coming in hot with questions of the week. Ask us now or forever hold your peace. Send in an email, a DM or the gram. Questions of the week coming at you like bam. 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 All right, what do we got for question number one, Kim? 
Our first question is coming from Dale D from Clark County. And he's asking, what would you say about buying a trip for someone as a gift? I would absolutely accept a trip as a gift. Thank you very much. <laughs> is Dale taking you somewhere, Kim? Hit me up, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's a wonderful gift, but you have to think about like, should you loop them into your plans to see if they're available those days or if is they've it a already surprise? is yeah, is it a surprise trip or have they already been there? Would they absolutely hate going there? Which I'm sure they wouldn't. But I found if, if I'm planning a trip for someone that I actually want to buy it for them as a gift, I tend to loop them into it. So every year for Jamal's birthday, I buy him a trip as a gift and he <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's a surprise. Sometimes it's not a surprise. And um, he always says he hates it, but in the end, he really loves it. I just tell you that. So my answer is don't buy somebody a gift. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, it's always a pleasure to have somebody plan a trip and take you somewhere as a gift. You can't go wrong that way. But like we were saying, you just really need to make sure that person's available for it. So if it's a surprise, kind of, I don't want to say drop hints, just do a little bit of fact finding, figure things out. Are they going to be available? And then, you know, drop the bomb on them and let them know, hey, we're going somewhere. You know Why what not? I would absolutely hate, though, is if someone said, pack your bag, we're going on a trip. And I didn't have enough time to go shopping for cute outfits or plan to get my hair done or any of these things that I like to do to that prepare so for a trip. You, Kim. I would be like, <laughs> really, we're going to Hawaii and I have no cute bathing suits, but I would get over it when I'm in Hawaii, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dale D, let us know who this person is. And if you end up following through on this, let us know how it goes. My mom actually bought me a trip as a graduation gift, and I absolutely had a phenomenal time in the Philippines, and I loved every part of that trip. So I think it's a great gift for graduations, birthdays, Christmas even, rather than just a normal gift. Mm -hmm. And then our second and last question for this week is coming from Seth from Los Angeles. And Seth is asking, very specific question. This is great. Thank you so much for this question. He's asking, I want to take my girlfriend to Paris for New Year's, but I don't know if we'll still be together by then. What should I do? Well, I have two thoughts, Seth. One, how are you getting to Paris? Because COVID's going on. So unless you have a non-American passport and can go, kudos hey, to you. It could hey, be. You know, but Kylie Jenner was just in Paris. So we have uh, a lot of international listeners. That's, out there. Very, that's hey very true. That's very true. Because she was doing business. So if you can do business in Paris. But my thought is, if you don't know if you're going to be with this person in that amount of time, maybe they're not worth buying a trip for. Mm. Ooh. It's my thought. I would also say harsh, but... New Year's is, what are we at? Four months away? You could probably stick it out. If you buy the trip, just know you cannot break up. You will be going on that trip. Well, he's going. She may not be going. Well, I'm just speaking from experience. If you buy a trip with somebody you're on the fritz with, you're going to have to hold out for that trip. Or just wait <laughs> until maybe two weeks before New Year's. And if you're still together, break it to her then that we're going to Paris. And if not, then... The last thing you want to do is go on a trip with somebody that you're not in a good place with or having a good time with. It's going to kind of ruin your experience in Paris. And so, Paris is such a romantic city. Yeah. There's so much to see and do there romantic wise. And so you want to be in a good place with this person. That's why I'm saying if you don't think you'll still be with her, don't even consider going with her. My advice, go to relationship counseling, book the trip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep the adventures going with us by following us on Instagram and YouTube at Travel Squad Podcast and send us in your questions of the week. You know, I love them. And if you found the information in this episode to be useful or if you thought we were just plain funny, please make sure to share it with a friend that will enjoy it too. Please subscribe, rate and review our podcast and tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We have some more amazing adventures and tips in store for you guys. Ooh, stay tuned. Ooh. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.